Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Michael Essig. Welcome to the live stream today. It's 4 p.m. UK time. We have uh, a few people here already in the chat. And today we're going to talk about ideas that buyers love. So let me uh, head over to the chat here and we'll see what we got already. Wendy is here from sunny Bramall in Cheshire. That's just down the road, really. Very nice to have you, Wendy. Grey Elephant Club from an unsettled USA. Isn't that always the case? Sean from Vermont. Uh, Michelle here from Toronto. Just big up these comments a little bit so I can see them. Um, who else have we got here? Code Whisperer uh, says, good morning from Texas. Good to have you. Anna is here from Puerto Rico. Catherine from the UK. Bo from Cincinnati. Uh, ba Bartos. Bartos from Germany is here. Ray is here. Good to have you. Christopher from Phoenix, Arizona. Mike from Texas. Melinda from Detroit. Jason from Birmingham, Alabama. Awesome. Well, thank you all for joining me today. Uh, Callie is here too. Callie from Florida. Good to have you. Hello again. Uh, it is wonderful to have you all here. Um, it's been a few weeks since we did a live stream. I think the last one I did was with uh, Stefan Kuhns a couple of weeks ago. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been a while. And this is going to be the last one for at least a week or so. Um, I'm going away on holiday next week, so uh, there won't be a live stream then. So Let's uh, let's enjoy it while we have it, right? Scott is here too. Hello to you. And Bridget um, from Long Island. Lovely. And uh, Leo from Minneapolis. Good to have you too. Dennis is here. Angela's here. Uh, Sharing Energy is here. Teddy is here from Texas. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. So um, what are we going to talk about today? Got quite a lot to get through. I wanted to um, expand on uh, a topic I've spoke about before, but really just kind of repeat some some things that I think, uh, you know, maybe new followers, new subscribers, new viewers um, haven't heard before about creating ideas that buyers love. How do we come up with ideas that really connect with people? What is it about th those ideas that sets them apart from other ideas? You know, what's the difference between an idea that falls flat and an idea that really connects with people? So that's what we're going to talk about today. So let me pull up my slides here and we'll uh, we'll get rolling here pretty quickly. So today's plan, we're going to talk about some different idea types. So I'm going to show you and demonstrate, you know, how there's different types of ideas for different scenarios and and, and how you might, you know, it really benefits you to, and to understand that and to think about that. Um, I'll go through some specific idea generation methods. So some of those you may be familiar with, some of them you've maybe seen me do before, um, but you may not have done as well. So uh, we'll do some idea generation methods. And then towards the end, um, if you are interested in learning more about idea generation and some of my methods, then the Ideas Workshop is my online course all about idea generation. The doors are closing for our current intake on Saturday. So if you are interested in that, uh, hang around because I'll be sharing a little bit more about what's included in the Ideas Workshop towards the end of this uh, this teaching session here. So. Uh, so, yeah, that's the plan today. And as usual, of course, if you have questions that you'd like uh, me to answer, then you can go ahead and pop them in the comments. I have the comments up here. I can read them as I go. So uh, don't worry about interrupting my flow. If you've got a question, just go ahead and pop it there. If I don't get, you know, I might not respond to it immediately, but I will pull back and, and answer your questions as we go. Um, so before we dive in here, a few more people have joined us. We've got uh, Dawn. Um, from what's that? Rene Gulf Coast, USA. Sounds nice. Um, C, Chad from Los Angeles and Carlos from Vancouver. Lovely. Wonderful to have you guys here too. Um, who is this for? Maybe you, you just stumbled across this stream. Maybe you recently subscribed to my newsletter. You just joined us for this live stream and you're, you're not familiar with a lot of the concepts that I'm talking about. So um, let me explain a few things. So my business is... Um, uh, covers a broad range of like different income sources. One of them is print on demand sites. So that's uh, sites like Merch by Amazon, Redbubble, um, TeePublic. There's, there's plenty of others there as well. Um, and I've been selling on these websites for maybe seven or eight years now. Uh, if you're not familiar with print on demand, basically it's a, it's a uh, system whereby artists can upload art, can upload their designs, 
and they can be sold on products. And you don't have to produce the products. You don't have to touch anything. That's all done by the sites themselves. And they pay you a royalty if your design sells on a product. So a lot of the game here, a lot of the, the value, if you like, comes from having original ideas, getting ahead of trends, and coming up with ideas that really connect with people more than you know the competition does. So that's the that's what it takes to really succeed at this game. And that's why the ideas, you know, topic is something that I'm you know, quite interested in and passionate about. Um, I also run a couple of Etsy stores. I have a Shopify store, I have an Instagram account for, for that brand as well. And I license my art elsewhere. So I license my art to Hot Topic and Spencer's and I have a calendar that goes in stationery stores and a few other things. These are, you know, they're not all under one brand. I have different brands and different, um, you know, you might call them series or mini brands, different kinds of collections of designs that I that I, that I sell under. And uh, this is built up over, you know, several years. This didn't obviously didn't start and didn't happen overnight. I, I started selling on Redbubble. That was like my first print on demand experience. And then that grew and I kind of, you know, found these other sites. I found Etsy and I've built up a business over, over several years doing this. And that obviously allows me to, um, you know, I run my own business. I employ some of my family and basically come up with original ideas, put them out there and then try to come up with something funny that makes people laugh or that connects with people. And, uh, and yeah, there's certainly worse, you know, worse jobs, worse careers to be doing out there. And I think it's a great, a great business model. And I've learned a lot along the way. And a lot of it, like I say, is about coming up with really solid ideas and solid designs. So if that's something that's interesting to you, maybe you're a designer, maybe you're somebody already selling on these sites, or maybe you'd like to, and maybe you've got the idea, oh, sorry, you've got the design chops. So you're good at illustration, you're good at design, you can line things up, you can choose nice fonts, you can choose nice colors. Um, but you're, maybe you're struggling with like, how do I come up with the idea or the concept? Because no one's giving you briefs, no one's giving you, you know, create this, no one's saying, oh, I want the design to look like this. You're having to come up with ideas and concepts to put out there to see what sticks. And that's what you know. This is really about, and that's what who this, that's who this is for. Uh, I'm just going to scroll back through the comments real quick to see if there's uh, anything I missed there. Uh, we had uh, M M Belston from uh, Devon. Lovely. I'm going on. Uh, I'm not going to Devon. I'm going to Torquay. Now, is Torquay in Devon? I don't know. I'm going to Torquay next week for our holiday. So that's uh, that's cool. Um, uh, Flora is here from Algeria. Eugene from Minsk in Belarus. Risk. Sorry, Rick, Post from Colorado. And uh, Ayodele from Nigeria. Uh, Wild Panda from Morocco. Rick from Tallahassee. Uh, Water Pistols from Indonesia. And Catherine um, has a question, I think. I understand that quality is a factor, but in general, how many designs do you need to start making regular sales? Um, yeah, Catherine, that's a tricky one because a lot of the... Uh, there's a lot of variables there. You know, of course, if you, for example, if you hop on a, you know, really hot trend, then you could just have a few designs and then, you know, those few designs might start selling if you, if you targeted things really, uh, really well. Um, but yeah, it, it's a really hard one to answer. I would say for me personally, um, I had maybe, uh, I think it took me like 30, it was less than a month, I think, before my first design sold on Redbubble. Um, but then it depends what you mean by regular sales. Like, are we talking about one sale a month or are we talking about, you know, 10 sales a month? Like, what, what does regular sales mean? Um, so, yeah, there's, there's, it's very difficult to kind of um, provide an answer on that without a, a few more um, variables, a few more of the blanks filled in, if that makes sense, Catherine. Um, and Belstein says, I'm not from Torquay. Uh, oh, not far from Torquay. Sorry, you're not far from Torquay. Cool, cool, cool. Well, I'll be there next week. Um, Windsorpedia from Nova Scotia, Canada. And Terry says, yes, Torquay is Devon, just down the road from me in Exeter. Cool. Yeah, I didn't know whether like Devon is just the north of Cornwall bit. But anyway, uh, I digress. So um, let's crack on with this. So my business, yeah, that's my business. And that's what we're going to talk about. So yeah, another way of looking at it, my business is I, I have ideas. I turn those ideas into designs. I distribute them to different channels. And then I just rinse and repeat. And if you do that long enough, and you, you pay attention, you pay attention to what works and what doesn't, and you pay attention to the things that get people commenting and get people sharing or that do pop, do well here or do well there. Um, rinsing and repeating 
is uh, is how you build up, you know, you build up your portfolio, you build up your business, and that's how it works. Question here from Uncounted Survivor. How do the profits play out? What amount percentages goes to others? Um, too big a question. There's, a, there's very, you know, it changes depending on the site and all those kind of things. Um, if you check out my website, michaelessick.com, I have a big blog post on the best print-on-demand sites. That's the name of the of the blog post. If you just Google that, if you Google best print-on-demand sites, you'll see my my article there. Um, click on that, and that will tell you a lot of what you need to know about the different print-on-demand sites, how they work, and the the royalty rates and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so yeah, go and check that out. So yeah, that's my business uh, distribution channels that I sell on. So Redbubble, T Public, Merch by Amazon, and the rest, Etsy, and others, and Shopify. Um, but there's other ones, of course, that occasionally you might sell on or that you might have heard of. Sure Today sites like T Fury or uh, Ripped or Shirt Punch or other teas or uh, places like that. There's a, there's a big list of those guys. Um, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter. If you're trying to build a brand up, you're trying to build a following, then, um, hey, you need ideas, you need designs for that, right? If, you, if you've got an Instagram account, and you know you you want to grow that thing. You want to grow a following of people who are regularly enjoying your content. Guess what? You need content. You need ideas and designs. You need designs to show people. And you can't just keep uploading the same designs every day because people are going to unsubscribe or whatever, unfollow you. So um, that's another distribution channel for your designs and for your ideas. And if you want to grow that, and obviously the best artists and the most popular artists on Instagram and on you know Facebook and Twitter, they upload new content very, very regularly. So that's another distribution channel that can grow a very, you know, lucrative, that can be a, that can be a marketing channel for you, right? If you've got 50,000 Instagram followers, it's very easy then to say, hey, I've just launched this new design. It's available on a shirt. You can buy it here and so on. So um, that's, that's uh, another channel you can distribute through. Offline licensing means typically licensing to brick and mortar stores. So if you're licensing to Hot Topic or Sainsbury's or Spencer's or, you know, Paper Chase, a high street brand, um, that, that's what that's going to be. So you can take your designs, license them offline, not through print on demand sites, and just have another income stream from your, from your artwork. Um, digital sales. So um, there's plenty of websites online where you can sell your artwork and license it if you like. Um, I'm thinking of places like, uh, well, there's places like Creative Fabrica and others like that, um, you know, stock photo sites, iStock Photo and other, other similar ones like that. Um, those are places you can sell your artwork. That's not, not something I do, but of course, if you're able to create original designs and original ideas, that's another distribution channel. Wholesale is another channel that's pretty untapped in this kind of space. That there's, there's new online wholesale marketplaces where you can connect with people who have stores, who have physical stores, and you can you know, connect with them and say, hey, look at my designs, look at my products, I can, I can fulfill these. And they might say, oh, we'd like to buy 100 of that T-shirt. And then you can you know, take their order, take their money, produce the goods, ship them out to them. And hey, you've done all that without actually, um, you know, or with minimal contact with the product or anything like that. Uh, client work, of course. For others as well, you can you can do client work as a distribution channel um, to get word out there about your brand and about your stuff. Um, so yeah, lots of distribution channels. And when I talk about design ideas, this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. Um, so I think a lot of times I say, you know, how do, how do we come up with ideas? And I'm talking about ideas. Maybe for some people that's like, well, what do you mean by an idea? Well, I'm talking about this kind of thing, the kind of thing you see on screen here. So um, things like little short funny phrases, um, parody designs, uh, rhyming slogans, funny graphic ideas, puns, different types of puns. So this kind of thing, like self-contained, usually it's going to be a self-contained design. It's not going to be a pattern or something like that. It's going to be like a you know self-contained little single shot design that's perfect for T-shirts, that's perfect for stickers, that's perfect for Instagram, that's perfect for lots of different products and a lot of those products that you can sell through, through print-on-demand sites. So we'll dive back into these a little bit more later, but... Um, First off, let me run you through my kind of idea process or how this kind of thing works. Um, a couple of comments here, I think, or questions. Uh, Violet says, I like thinking of it as distributing designs. That's a different way of looking at it than making shirts. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, 
when you when you think about things in terms of oh I'm just I'm a print on demand seller or I design T-shirts, you're really limiting, you know, a lot of the opportunity there, or you're you know you're focusing very much on one thing. That that's good for a time being because of course it really helps to focus on on one thing as you're growing that thing in order to get it get it working and functioning and and to make it profitable. But if you want to really grow a, a sustainable business, you have to always be on the lookout for other opportunities. And if you've got your blinkers on and you're thinking, I design T-shirts, um, rather than I create designs or I create artwork that can then be distributed, all these different, you know, all these different channels, all these different opportunities, different websites, but also different business models as well. You know, you can license your art or you can sell it outright or you can uh, build up a following or a mini brand, you know, all these different opportunities. And it really boils down to the same thing, which is it's all built on the back of, a portfolio of designs, you know, you creating designs, or even to get even more fundamental, um, it's really built on your ability to have original ideas that connect with people. And once you've got that skill down, once you're able to, you know, really come up with stuff kind of at the drop of a hat, you know, if you can look at a subject or a topic or a trend and come up with ideas that connect, and of course, you know what it takes to put together a nice design that looks nice and that's going to connect with people. That's the skill that your, your business is built on. And then, you know, it can go all these different directions. It doesn't have to be just print on demand on, you know, Redbubble or something. It can be a lot of different, different places. Um, Windsorpedia says, I know many of the POD sites use the same printers, but how do you notice a, con have you noticed a consistent difference in print quality between them? Um, no, I haven't. You're right. They, they usually use the same printers or mostly the same printers. I do not have a big experience with, you know, one site that's terrible versus this. I think you just get every site has issues from time to time. You know, there's always going to be returns and issues with prints, but I've not noticed a big, big issue there. Uh, and Winterpedia says, as a follow up, do you have a favorite type of shirt to print on? I love a tri blend, but the DTG process doesn't work as well on it. Cheers. Um, the Bella Canvas 3001 is my go-to. I think that's the most popular one on Printful as well. Um, never had an issue with that. Even, I mean, they do tri-blend versions of that same shirt. I don't know if it's, um, you know, 100% cotton or whatever, but it prints very well in my experience. So, so yeah. Okay, so these type of designs, that's what I'm talking about. Self-contained little designs. You can, you know, as a designer, um, you know, if I was 18, 19, 20, thinking about a career, um, the advice I'd go back and give myself is get really good at coming up with ideas, turning them into designs that people buy and that people connect with. And that means they're going to be the kind of things you see on screen. They're going to be simple. They're going to be catchy. Uh, humor is a great, great tool to use and to lean on. And if you can develop that funny bone and really, um, you know, a kind of aptness for understanding what makes something funny and what people connect with, um, that is really going to help you build a business. And then I would say to my 18, 19, 20 year old self, um, get busy, get your head down, create a lot of these designs. It's going to make you better. And everything you create, you know, you own it, you stack it in your pile, your portfolio. And in five years time, in 10 years time, you're going to look back and have probably thousands of individual designs that you own and that you can do things with, that you can license, that you can create new collections from, that you can, you know, remix and reuse and stuff. And that's how, you know, you, you would be able to grow a, a really nice, steady, profitable business off the back of, of stuff like this. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, a few people saying they love the Bella Canvas too as well. Um, and Callie as well saying the 3001 makes the most sense. Okay, cool. So let's crack on here with some of my, whoop, where's my cursor gone? That's a problem with using two monitors. I lose my cursor. So yeah, um, ideas, what are we talking about? So we start with the subject, you know, maybe that might be a trend, like something that's happening right now. Maybe it would be something like, uh, I don't know really what's happening right now, but, um, uh, you know, we have trends from time to time, Dogecoin, sea shanties, the World Cup, whatever it might be, um, those are examples of trends. Or it might be a subject or a thing that rolls around every year, like Christmas or Halloween, um, the 4th of July. And then you try and come up with an idea around that thing. So you could try and come up with a concept. Maybe, you know, maybe you're lucky. Maybe some ideas are 
just popped in your head. Maybe you've stumbled across something. You saw something while you were out walking the dog. Maybe your child said something. They mixed their words up and it came out as a funny joke. And maybe you can do something with that. That kind of thing happens. That's great. A lot of great designs and a lot of great ideas come from, you know, serendipity like that. However, if you want to build a, a real business off the back of it, you're going to have to churn out these designs. And that means you're going to have to rely on more than just the occasional idea that pops in your head. You need to actually focus on coming up with ideas because you need ideas in order to turn them into designs, in order to then distribute those designs. So this is the this is the kind of you know plan. And this is where, you know, obviously my focus is and, and kind of what my passion is, is how do we come up with ideas? What makes ideas good? What is the, you know, how do we generate those ideas? And also it's because I've seen that as you get better ideas, that has an exponential impact on everything else down the line. So ideas, I think, are even more important than design. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, everything in the chain is important, but I think ideas are the thing that, you know, can really make the difference between making the occasional sale on Redbubble and having a business that does you, you know, five, six figures a, a month um, on uh, not maybe not six figures, but uh, but yeah, eventually, um, you know, five and six figures, six figures a year, five figures a month. Um, that That's the difference is the ideas. So what am I talking about when I say idea? Um, an idea is, is, is something in your head, right? It's, it's a nebulous. It's, you can't see it. You can't touch it. You can't grab it. It's, it's, it's an idea. It doesn't exist yet in the real world. A design does exist. Like these things here, these are all designs. They exist. Someone, you know, put pen to paper or I, Apple Pencil to iPad or uh, Pixel to Photoshop, and they created something. You know, we can see these finished images, okay? They're finished designs. That's a design. But the idea is something we can't see. Another way of thinking about it is a bit like, um, you know, gas, liquid, and solid. An idea is like a gas. It's very, you know, hard to grasp. It can take very different forms. You know, moves move that to a liquid. It becomes a bit more malleable. It's a bit more, you know, something you can see. And then a solid, that would be the design, you know. So you, every, every idea, every design really goes through this process. You start with an idea. You morph it, you know, through a process. Maybe you put pen to paper, you start sketching, you work through some concepts, and then eventually you come all the way through to a solid design, a fixed medium, the thing that you can copyright, and that makes the difference. You know, that's that's the thing you're going to upload and finish with. So how do we come up with ideas and then turn them into solid designs? How do we come up with something that's going to be good? Um, and going back to the, you know, the more ideas you have, the better ideas you have. This is a, a principle I've learned over over many years. Um, there is no magic formula for coming up with a winning idea. There is no such thing as the best idea or anything like that. What there are are better ideas and worse ideas and ideas that are more likely to sell and ideas that are less likely to sell. So the more ideas you have, um, the better ideas you're likely to come up with because you'll have a, a bigger pool to pull from. You know, this is a, a principle um, guy called uh, Linus Pauling said, um, the best way to have a good idea is to have a lot of ideas. So the more ideas you have, the better ideas you have. And the better ideas you have, the better your results are going to be. It's just common sense, right? If you come up with good ideas that people connect with that are funny, that make more sense than those bad ideas, then you're going to get better results. You're going to find people buying them at a higher rate than they would buy designs or ideas that were not so strong. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Will good ideas solve all your problems? No, they won't. Um, ideas are not, a, you know, no, like I said, there's no perfect idea. There's no idea that's going to make you, um, you know, a million dollars overnight or something like that. But good ideas will improve your chances. And there's a lot of people and a lot of designers I see doing well on everything except the ideas which is to say that they are good at design. They're really great illustrators. They have a following maybe on Instagram. They're very, um, you know, original. They have their own style. They have their own brand, if you like. But they, what lets them down is the, the idea side. You know, they're producing designs that aren't that catchy, that don't have that much of an appeal, that are, you know, a bit too um, personal, if you like, and they're not really understanding some of the concepts that would take that same kind of principle and just turn that idea into something that would really sell and do well. Um, 
Roger here says, ideas are the currency that make the world active. Acting on those ideas are what makes the world go around. Yeah, absolutely. Like every design you see, every uh, joke, every tweet, every funny Instagram post, any meme started as an idea. And those are the things these days that really, you know, travel fast. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, lots of people really do well. There's lots of very good designers. Um, and they just need help with the idea side. And that's what, you know, that's what I want to teach you guys about, help you guys with how to come up with better ideas so that when you put your designs up there, you're not, you know, thinking, wondering whether they're any good. You're actually, you know, you have a lot more confidence in what you're putting out there. And especially if you wanted to, you know, pitch your work somewhere or try and get a deal somewhere, try to pitch your work to a licensee. Uh, you would have confidence that, you know, I know these are solid, good ideas. I know they make sense. I know that I'm not, uh, you know, just creating something crazy that doesn't have any kind of appeal to people. Um, so uh, why ideas matter? For organic sales, you need a lot of designs. You know, if you want to make money from print-on-demand sites, whether that's Redbubble, Merch by Amazon, um, Etsy, platforms like that, it's very, very hard to make a sustainable, decent living to make anything like, you know, a living wage or a, you know, six figure income off the back of just a handful of designs. So, you know, if you've got, you know, 10 designs, 50 designs, 100 designs, it's still pretty, pretty small beans. And it's going to be still pretty difficult um, to make to make a decent income from those designs. So you need a lot of designs. Um, my portfolio currently sits somewhere between like two and 5,000 designs. Maybe 2,000 of those are going to be like individual designs that are really, you know, the kind of examples I showed earlier. And that's the kind of, you know, once I got past, I think the 300 mark, that's when I started to see sustainable uh, income and steady income from my work. So you need a lot of designs. You can't just, you know, focus on a few and, and cross your fingers, you need a lot of designs. And therefore, you need a lot of ideas. You know, how are you going to come up with 300, 1,000, 2,000 designs if you don't have uh, a lot more ideas? Because you're always going to have more ideas than you have designs. You're always going to have to work from those ideas to come up with your designs. Um, so that's why ideas matter. You need a lot of them. Originality is everything. And the best time ever to get ideas um, Sorry, this is the best time ever to get to get ideas in front of people and profit from it. You know, whether that's Instagram, whether that's uh, the print on demand sites that have organic traffic, whether it's Etsy, uh, Shopify, very easy platform to get get up and running and sell. Uh, even advertising these days, you know, you can you can spin up a Facebook ad, you can spin a spin up an Instagram ad. These things are have never been easier. So it's never been easier to take your ideas, your really good ideas, and show them to people that actually would would enjoy them and benefit from them. And um, there's also this element of future proofing, like POD is really good. Uh, you know, it's kind of what a lot of my, I'll just make this a little bit bigger so you can read this text. Um, you know, POD is, is really great. It's what a lot of, it's, it still makes up the majority of my, my income and my business. Um, but brands are built on more than, um, brands are built, you know, on ideas and manufacturers, retailers, and brands, they want the best ideas and they want original ones. And I think we've seen this over time with print on demand sites and stuff. They want to work with, you know, quality designers with good artwork who are working on original concepts and stuff. They don't want to work with copycats. They don't want to work with people who are cheating their way through. And, you know, if you're one of those people, if you have the good ideas, if you have the best ideas, then you also have the best opportunities. You know, you have people who want to work with you. You have, uh, you will have people reaching out to you, and you will have the opportunities like the offline stuff. You'll have the ability to, you know, get picked up and run on certain, you know, certain websites and stuff like that. So the, the better the better opportunities come to those who have the best ideas. So this is really about, you know, if you want to future proof your business and future proof your brand, then better ideas is one way of doing that. Um, some examples of the kind of artists who have done this really well, uh, Stephen Rhodes, um, probably, certainly, I, I would imagine he's one of the top selling uh, t-shirt designers in the world and has been for, for a couple of years at least. Um, I don't know the exact nature of, of Stephen's like, uh, business and his income, but I can tell you it is within the millions of dollars um, a year that, that Stephen generates from his designs. 
And, and you can see, obviously, the quality of his designs and the quality of his work. But what I want to bring your attention to is the idea here and the idea and the concept, which is really what makes Stephen's work so popular. You know, he comes up with really solid ideas. Or you could even say he's come up with one really solid idea, and then he has been able to replicate that and create hundreds of designs around that same concept. So he does this kind of vintage um, vintage uh, like children's book cover style, retro you know book covers. Um, and then he puts this twist on it where there are always something dark or something sinister in the um, alien abductions or you know seances or uh, some some satanic imagery or something like that. Um, so that's Stephen Rhodes, a really good example of a of a designer who's been able to take great ideas, turn them into great designs, and build a huge um, business off the back of it. And if you want to, by the way, find out more about Stephen, um, I have a full big interview with him on my website, michaelessig.com. Um, if you just go there and look uh, for artist interviews, you'll see that. Um, similar people in a similar boat, Dino Mike, um, another one of my favorite designers, uh, does cute little puns, very simple illustrations, quite different, you know, from Stephen's style. But still, he's built a full-time, you know, full-time business, full-time income off of his income from from Redbubble, from T Fury, from places like that, doing simple, funny designs, puns, jokes, um, you know, nothing overly complicated, but he just knows exactly how to do it well. Um, Vincent Trinidad, uh, another one who's, you know, been able to sell, um, you know, millions of dollars worth of T-shirts because of the originality and the quality of his ideas, you know, the cleverness of his ideas, his ability to understand what visuals have what connotations and to put things together. That's the difference with, you know, the top selling designers across print on demand and other places. Um, and others as well, Robinson, David Olenek, Tob Fonseca, and Maria Young. These are all people who I've interviewed on my blog, if you want to go and check it out. Um, after this, you know, big, long, written interviews where they share their tips. And these are all people who make it, you know, a full-time living and in some cases much more than a full-time living from their designs. So um, that's just to kind of show you, you know, this is not just um, pie in the sky. These are people whose designs and whose ideas have made the difference and allowed them to build a, a really massive business. A um, couple of comments, I think, here before I crack on. Um, M says, I'm the opposite. I have so many ideas, but I'm not a designer. Yeah, of course, it takes both sides, right? You know, you have to be able to have the ideas and design if you want to come up with stuff. Um, but good thing about being the idea person is um, design is actually relatively cheap. It, it, it's cheap and getting cheaper, which is to say finding a person who will be able to turn your ideas into good designs actually gets easier and easier all the time. So uh, Winsopedia, have you made any COVID vaccination themes designs? Sort of feels weird, but it is topical. Yeah, well, it's been topical for uh, a lot longer than any of us would like it to have been. Um, I haven't done many covid -y inspired designs, I don't think. I, it's not something I've really touched on personally. I, I, because it's been kind of a controversial topic, I've not really waded into that one too much. Carlos, how do you protect your designs and how do you deal with copycats? Carlos, I've got a great article on my website about that. If you just go to michaelessic.com or you search for Michael Essick copyright, um, I've got a lot of detail on that. And I've got an FAQs page, which will which will help you with that question. Um, Eileen says, never say dead, funny, simple designs. Um, Hawk says, don't forget the great illustrator. Yes. Uh, Illustrator from Brazil, another another very good example. I haven't been able to interview those guys yet, but they are very good as well. Um, okay, let's let's crack on here. So um, this comes back to something I was saying before. Are our ideas the next most important skill for the self-directed designer? I believe they are. Um, here's what I mean by this: if you if you're a if you're someone who's doing this, if you're trying to create designs, trying to build a business from your art and from your artwork. Um, design is, like I just said, it's a skill that's cheap and getting cheaper. It's cheap in the sense that um, it's, it's relatively easy for people to come up with designs these days, um, or, or sorry, to like create designs. You know, it's not just that it used to be, you know, 10 years ago, there was Photoshop and there was a few other programs. And if you knew how to use them, you could create original designs. These days, that's not the case. There's, there's lots of free tools even that will allow people to actually create designs 
And there's lots of ways that people can actually generate or, or use clip art or even get ready-made designs in some cases, you know, places like Creative Fabrica, um, uh, stock photo sites and stuff, you know, people can buy designs really, really cheaply. And you can also find designers re really quite cheaply and good quality ones too. So you can, for example, hire, you know, an illustrator to handle the illustration or to handle the design cheaper than you could, you know, 10 years ago. So design itself is getting cheaper. That's bad news if what you do is design and only design. So if what you're good at is lining things up in Photoshop, picking nice fonts, choosing nice colors. Um, 10 or 20 years ago, that was still a relatively high price skill because not many people knew how to use Photoshop. Not many people were familiar with the file formats. It was more of a skilled profession. These days, that's not the case. These days, it's a lot easier for people to do stuff. So if you're a designer and all you do is design, I think that's dangerous. That's a, d a dangerous situation to be in. However, if you're a designer who can come up with ideas and you can actually combine your ideas with good designs, then this whole new world opens up to you of distributing those designs to different places, uh, you know, building a business off the back of it. So I think, you know, ideas are the next most important skill. I think once you've got the basics and you're able to design, having that ideas ability is something that very few designers um, even think about, never mind cultivate and spend time, you know, uh, developing. And I think that's, uh, that's the opportunity in the years ahead. Um, so I've done this for, for many years. I've developed what I would call methods, techniques, and tricks for coming up with original ideas and original design concepts, such that I can take, you know, almost any topic. I can, um, you know, whether it's a trend or something that's happening right now, whether it's a season, seasonal thing like Halloween or, or Christmas, and I can combine that topic with these methods that I've got, I can run those topics through my methods and I can come up with a lot of great original ideas. So things that other people haven't thought of yet, things that haven't been done yet, original stuff. It's a bit like, um, you know, a chef might take, um, you know, if you, if you presented a chef with a load of ingredients and said, um, you know, make something from this, they'd be able to do it. They know some proven methods. They know some recipes. They could look at the pastry and the fish and the cream and whatever, and and do a fish pie, or they could look at it and do something else. So that you know, they could come up with original ideas. Um, my wife loves watching MasterChef, so I see this a lot. You know, they do those kind of challenges where it's like, here's some ingredients, make something and impress us. It's a bit like that. How how are they able to do that? You know, professional chefs, they've learned through experience the methods that work, and they can look at a set of ingredients and come up with not just one concept, but maybe four or five different dishes from this selection of ingredients. So it's that same concept. You know, once you understand those methods, it doesn't matter what the topic is. It doesn't matter what the ingredients are. It doesn't matter whether it's fish or meat or vegetables or, or rice or anything. You'll be able to come up with something because you have these proven methods that you know work. So, um, so yeah, once you know these, the types and these patterns, applying them does become does become second nature. It becomes easy. It becomes something that you do almost automatically. Um, so these ideas, the ones you see on screen here, um, let me just pick this up a little bit so you can see. Um, these are all, you know, representative of different kind of types of ideas. For example, um, this one here, you know, that's a that's a funny phrase. This one is a is playing on an iconic image. It's a it's a parody design. This one uses rhyming fries before guys. That rhymes. That's a that's a rhyming phrase. Um, I am super mature. That's a that's a double meaning. That's a double meaning of a of a word. The word mature has two meanings there. So that's a pun based on that double meaning. Uh, the T Rex design. This is this is a design without any any text. And the the joke, if you like, the the hook of this design is that it's a T Rex in a kind of 80s style you know graphic. So it's kind of putting together two things that don't typically go together and coming up with a funny idea from that. Berry Christmas. Um, that's obviously a, a, a pun, or you could call it a replacement pun. Berry instead of Merry, Berry Christmas instead of Merry Christmas. And uh, we've got here another one, I'm just here for the booze. So again, that's kind of a funny phrase, but it's playing with, with language a little bit uh, with, the, with the use of the word booze. And there's Sasquatch, that's like an internal pun, right? That's making, uh, making something of the, the sounds within that word. So the word Sasquatch, 
you know, it's emphasized a certain part of it in order to, to come up with this, this funny idea. So these ideas, they all represent a different idea type. So those idea types we've got here, we've got funny phrases, like I said, rhyming phrases, fries before guys. We've got iconic parody. We've got a visual gag with the T-Rex. We've got a double meaning pun with the cheese one. We've got a replacement pun with Berry Christmas. We've got internal puns with Sasquatch, and we've got wordplay as well going on. So we've got lots of different idea types there. Um, what I want to do now is actually show you and, and pull out a few of those ideas just for the sake of time. Obviously, we can't cover all of them. Um, by the way, these are all idea types that I actually teach you how to generate ideas for inside the Ideas Workshop, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but today, I'm just going to pull out three of these, these types. So funny phrases, rhyming phrases, and replacement puns. I'm going to show you how you can generate original ideas that come up with these idea types. And these are idea types, like the title of this video, ideas that buyers love. Buyers love these types of ideas. They love all these types of ideas, but in particular, or ones that are very easy to generate, funny phrases like this, rhyme ones like this, and then replacement puns like this one. These are like my bread and butter. These are, these are you know, you can always come up with these ideas pretty simply, pretty quickly. And they always... You know, they make up the majority, I would say, of my income in any given month. Um, of course, if you're a great designer, you might you might look to do visual designs like this and play on that strength. But the bread and butter of funny T-shirts and, and stuff that does well and that relates to trends and topics, if you can come up with funny phrases that click with people, if you can use rhymes, and if you can do replacement puns like this, you're really off to a solid start. And you can you know, you can build a great business just off of that. So those three particular idea types, that's what I'm going to walk you through in a second. I'm going to show you some methods for doing that. A um, couple of questions I think we have here. Um, what have we got here? Carlos says, thanks, Michael. No problem. Kate's here from Northern Ireland. ASMR says, I have ideas. I'm creating designs, but not a single sale. Well, stay tuned because uh, you might be missing something, and I'll go into it here in a sec. Excuse me. So, um, oh, yeah, one thing we want to look out for. So those are some of the idea types. That This is by no means an exhaustive list. This is just an illustrative list to pull out some examples of different types of ideas. And the thing to, to remember here is every type of idea has a different way of arriving at it, right? If you want to come up with a funny phrase, there's a particular method for doing that. If you want to come up with a funny rhyming slogan, there's a particular method for doing that. It's different. Uh, you you have to follow different pathways to come up with each of these things. If I was a chef and I wanted to cook, to bake a cake, that would that's a very different recipe than the recipe for making a fish pie or whatever. So there's different techniques for each of these ones, but I'm gonna you're gonna share with you some tips about those particular ones. And while I do, one thing you want to bear in mind is this uh, this framework. I call this the JAR framework, J A R, and that stands for juxtaposition, alliteration, and rhyme. This is something you want to look out for whenever you're generating ideas. But if you can click, if you can kind of tick these things off, or if you can find these in your ideas, that's usually the indication of an idea that's likely to connect and do well with people. Because buyers love ideas that have juxtaposition. That's basically the, the crux of humor. That's when two things rub up against one another, two things that don't typically go together, and you put them up against one another. For example, the T-Rex in the 80s style. That's an example of juxtaposition. Or uh, Stephen Rhodes' designs, putting together, you know, satanic rituals with retro children's book covers. That's a nice juxtaposition. Um, alliteration, of course, that means when uh, two, two words sound alike, Cactus Club or something like that. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts, that's alliteration. And that's something people really like in their phrases and in their sayings. So keep a lookout for that. And then rhyme. Finally, which is another big one that people really like in their in their phrases and in their designs. So if you can find these in your ideas as you're generating ideas, that's like a green light that says that those are probably going to be ideas that are more likely to connect well with people. So um, replacement puns. Let's start off with this one. So we have an example here. Berry Christmas. Um, the joke is is relatively straightforward, right? Uh, it says Berry Christmas instead of Merry Christmas. And we've got a picture of a berry. I guess that's a raspberry or a strawberry wearing a Christmas hat. 
I mean, it's about as simple a design as you could get, but it's very effective and you can see why people like it. And you can see how this would be a very versatile idea as well. This idea would work on a t-shirt. This would work on a greetings card. This would work on any number of different products and gifts for Christmas. Um, so this is a replacement poem. Berry rhymes with Mary. And what's happened is they've replaced Mary with Berry and arrived at Berry Christmas. So this is a replacement pun, or, or I call these I call this the rhyme and replace method. And um, I can walk you through this, this process here and show you how you can come up with ideas like that. Um, so for example, let's say you were you wanted to come up with some ideas about um, you no, know, you know, maybe around fruit. Maybe you're trying to come up with some ideas around fruit. So you take as your topic fruit. And then you find a related word like, for example, berry, the word berry. Well, what you can do then is head over to a website called rhymezone.com. This is a free website, completely free. You can head over here and you can type in the word berry and you will find a big list of words that rhyme with berry. It will break it down by syllables. Or if you click here, find rhymes advanced, it will show you by kind of a score rating. So what really rhymes with berry, very, Mary, uh, Jerry. And you can work down this list and you can find a word like Mary. There we can see the word Mary. And then what you can do is you could have a head over. Um, so, sorry, I've uh, messed up my, uh, my presentation here. Let me just update this one here. So we've got our word berry and it rhymes with Mary. So let's say we pick a word then. So we pick a word that rhymes with berry. We pick the word Mary. And then what you can do is head over to a site called the Free Dictionary, and it's idioms.thefreedictionary.com. This is a site that has a lot of idioms or sayings, and then you can just put in your word. And what it will do is it will come back with phrases that have that word in them. So for example, you can see here, in, eat, drink, and be merry. Uh, lead one on a merry dance, make merry, merry as a grig. I don't know what that one is, merry Christmas. Um, and lots of other ones as well. So, so you might see where this is going, but basically what we can do then is, so we find, a, we find an idiom featuring that word. So we're looking for an idiom featuring the word merry. So we could have had, you know, merry as a jig or eat, drink and be merry, but we choose merry Christmas because that's one that's well known. And then all we do is replace the rhyming word with the related word, and we arrive at Berry Christmas, which, of course, is the uh, the design we have here. So you could have done that with, with any of these phrases. We could have gone for eat, drink, and be berry, and you could have done a cute little design around that. Or um, make berry. Might be a bit more difficult with that one. But you, you get the principle and you get the idea. Walking through this process, all you need is a word, a word that's going to have you know, other words that rhyme with it, then you can walk through this process and come up with, I mean, potentially endless ideas and endless opportunities uh, for coming up with original concepts and stuff. And of course, if you're doing this for a, you know, a new trending topic or something like that, and you're using a word that's, um, you know, that, that other people haven't used yet, you can see how you can quickly arrive at a lot of original ideas using that method. So that's one method. That's just one. That's the rhyme and replace approach. And once you've done that, of course, you you know, we've replaced Mary with Berry. We know it can be funny. So we just go looking for other idioms or other, other places, other word, other phrases that contain the word Mary that we can replace with Berry. So we found a load there. But you could look in you could look in song lyrics. You could look on uh, you could do a search on Wikipedia. You could do a search on Google and just see what comes up. Um, and that, that's going to lead you to a lot of other, you know, rabbit holes and other ideas. So that's one, just one way of coming up with original ideas, the rhyme and replace method uh, for generating replacement puns like that. Really straightforward. You just work through this process and you can arrive at, you know, lots of original ideas using that, that method. Okay, let's look at one more, rhyming phrases. So this one here, fries before guys, um, works because it's a simple rhyme, right? It works because it because it rhymes. If it said fries before gentlemen, it wouldn't be funny. <laughs> if it said fries before um, males, it wouldn't work. So the fact that it rhymes gives us a, you know, a funny concept that, that works well. And again, rhyme zone here is your best friend. So again, if you put in the word, you know, fries, not fires, if you put in the word fries or whatever kind of your topic was or your subject, 
And then you just work down the list and just basically see if you could come up with any little snappy phrases from what came on this list. So, you know, fries dies. Um, fries rhymes with cries. Could you do something about that? Um, I cries from my fries or something like that. Um, cries before thighs or... Um, yeah, could be, that could work. Um, highs, high, highs for fries. So anyway, you see the process I'm going through. Basically, just simply looking at a list of rhyming, you know, rhyming pairs or rhyming options can spark, you know, original ideas that rhyme. Got some other examples here, like slime time. That's an obvious rhyme. Too cool for school. Cool and school rhyme. So you know, just using that simple tool of rhyme zone can really help you uh, brainstorm you know, simple ideas like that. We've got a few here. Um, Stephanie says, skies out, fries out. Exactly, right? Um, just working down that list can just spark those original ideas like that. Um, so uh, Leo says, eat, drink, and marry. Yeah, I guess you could. Um, so that's uh, that was, what was that one? Rhyming phrases. That's another way to do it. Uh, funny phrases. So things like this thing here. I'm only here for the pizza. Uh, Alva says rice before guys. Yeah, exactly. Um, rice is nice and another kind of approaches like that. Um, I'm only here for the pizza, like funny phrases. Like what, what does this have about it? Um, there's no rhyme. There's no alliteration. There's not really any juxtaposition, but it's a, it's a funny kind of phrase, right? It's, it's a joke within a, within a, within a sentence, if you like. So, um, you'll see this a lot, by the way, you know, the funny phrase approach or what I call plug-in phrases, You'll see this a lot online. You'll see this on, you know, tweets that get thousands of, tens of thousands of likes or whatever. Um, some of you have never had to use LimeWire to get music for your off-brand MP3 player, and it shows. Um, babe, are you okay? You've barely touched your endlessly increasing pile of work that you're expected to do, even though we're in the middle of pandemic. So why, why have I pulled these out? Because these are all phrases that basically you can, like, plug stuff into, right? Some of you have never X and it shows. Bay by you okay, you've barely touched X. Um, Bay by you okay, you've, you're barely harmonizing in the sea shanty. 4.9 thousand likes. What part of something don't you understand? What part of it's nerf or nothing don't you understand? These are all phrases that you can insert stuff into and it can be funny. You know, it doesn't have to be on a t-shirt. can be funny on Twitter, can be funny on Instagram or whatever, can be a meme that kind of approach. So um, this in t-shirt world, this turns up in phrases like, I'd rather be something, or I'd rather be with something. I'd rather be with my dog. I'd rather be listening to the Grammy award-winning 1999 hit Smooth by Santana featuring Rob Thomas from Matchbox 20 of the multi-platinum album Supernatural. Um, ask me about X. Ask me about my video game achievements. Ask me about my explosive diarrhea. I bought and sold Bitcoin and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. So that one's like I something and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. This is my X shirt. This is my something shirt. This is my unicorn killing shirt. So these are all like phrases which you'll find on t-shirts showing up again and again. I'd rather be something. Ask me about something. Something and all I got was this lousy shirt. Support your local something. And these phrases you know, they lead to these designs. Some of them, you know, kind of meta or almost, um, you know, really on point about something like the unicorn killing one that obviously kind of is funny because of the unicorn blood splatter. Uh, Bitcoin, you know, I bought and sold Bitcoin and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. Again, it makes sense. It works. And what you'll find is when you're trying to generate funny ideas, if you have a list of phrases like this, you know, like some of these ones, um, you can just run down that list and ideas will just pop out at you and you'll find these funny, the funny juxtaposition in the phrases that really clicks and really makes sense and comes up with a funny idea. And then all you have to do is just, you know, find a nice way to, to make it work on a t-shirt design. You know, some of these are really simple. I'm not saying, you know, these are great designs or anything like that, but like this one's really nice and is a, is a funny concept. Uh, that one's not so great at all. Um, but like, this is my unicorn killing shirt. That's a funny concept that people can get with. So, um, so yeah, plug-in phrases, really great concept, really great idea. And the way you can um, hop on that is simply start building yourself a list of phrases that you see. So when you see phrases, 
on t-shirts just ask is there a, an easy way you know is that a real adaptable phrase that you can you know put something else into and would it work now i've been doing this for you know um how long now like <laughs> um several several years um and i've put together a list of these phrases i've got currently like 300 something phrases here um this is a tool i've built inside the ideas workshop um and th this basically is my big list of phrases. So what you can do is you can just like, you know, scroll through and just see, um, look at phrases and see if anything jumps out at you. You know, I came, I saw, I something. Um, I came, I saw, I partied. Um, I honk for X, like I honk for tacos. So I can just scroll down this list and just start coming up with ideas. Even better than that, I can actually also scroll down this list. I can put a word in here. So you know, let's say something like Dogecoin is going big at the moment and I want to come up with some ideas for that. I can just scroll down here and, and spot ideas like Dogecoin till I die or something like that and see what works and make my own little collection. So like, you know, Dogecoin dealer or in Dogecoin we trust or let's Dogecoin or something like that. Um, so yeah, th this is a really great principle. Um, if you want access to this, this is part of the ideas workshop, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but even if you don't join the Ideas Workshop, this same principle, you know, you can apply it. You can take the idea of, you know, um, cataloging and saving phrases that you can then simply pull up and run through and you'll be able to come up with your own ideas and it will allow you to come up with gr good ideas really quickly, a lot quicker than you would, you know, if you're just kind of staring at a blank piece of paper. So, um, so yeah, if you're interested in access to this, you know, my list of phrases and this particular tool, then you can get that in the Ideas Workshop. But even if you don't, um, start making a list of phrases. Start making your own personal plug-in phrase list that you can pull up. Okay, let me take a few questions here before I uh, crack on here. Um, Winsopedia said, uh, would that slime time design, triple rhyme, win? <laughs> uh, violate trademark. Yes, yes, it would. That was just an example of... Um, you know, the, the phrase slime time. So um, I don't know whether this is still the case, but like the, sli the slime trend, I don't know whether you have young children like I do, but uh, slime, you know, just the trend of people making slime and and doing stuff with slime. Um, obviously, you could do slime time. doesn't have to include Slimer from Ghostbusters, but you can use that same rhyme to do, you know, original designs. Or you could think about things that do have slime. So, for example, like slugs or snails, uh, you could do a, a snail that says slime time and it's a picture of a snail. So, yeah, that was just to illustrate the rhyming slogans or rhyming phrases um, approach. Um, Leo says fries before everyone dies. Very nice. Quite dark, but it works. Wendy says, do, do you have a maximum number of words? You don't want to be staring at someone's chest for too long um, and you don't want someone to walk away before you're finished reading. Yes, that's a very good uh, point, Wendy. You'll see that a lot of these examples, a lot of these designs I showed, and a lot of the phrases here um, in my list of plugin phrases, they are pretty snappy phrases. They're usually not more than um, I think some of the longest ones I can do it. I can I can sort here by A to Z. These are some of the longest ones. So sorry, I'm list sorry I wasn't listening. I was thinking about X or all I care about is X and maybe three people, you know, those are, that's about as long as you want to get for, for something like a t-shirt design. I mean, if you're trying to write funny tweets, you know, you can go a lot longer than that. If you're trying to brainstorm, you know, funny ideas like that, you know, you can get a lot longer, but yeah, if you're trying to design for t-shirts or for products, then you want to keep it to, you know, not more than a, a pretty short sentence. I, I don't think in terms of words, um, but certainly, you know, anything much longer than this, it's going to be quite difficult to fit that on a shirt and for it to make sense. So, yeah. Um, okay, a few more questions here. Let's see here. Grey Elephant Club. Uh, uh, Richard says, just checking in from Fort Lauderdale. Some great info. Thank you, Richard. Uh, Grey Elephant Club says, awesome, awesome. Thanks, Michael. Enjoy your vacation. Thank you very much. Uh, Hawk says, Dogecoin and Dragons. That's a nice one. Um Roger says on the Bitcoin shirt, might there be copyright infringement? No, I don't think so. Bitcoin is not uh, copyright protected. Uh, Eleni or Eleni, uh, for non-English native speakers who do not wish to use phrases, the way to create something witty um, is juxtaposition. Um, 
so I think what you're saying, Eleni, is if you're if you're not a native English speaker, what's the best way to create um, create funny ideas? Yeah, I mean, if if you're unable to use phrases or text, then uh, you would want to be looking perhaps more at kind of visual ideas, like the the T Rex idea I showed earlier. There's there's a couple of different approaches that I teach in the Ideas Workshop. There's uh, iconic images, there's graphic styles, and layout frameworks, which are all visual approaches, so three different visual approaches that don't require or don't always require text. So yeah, that, that's certainly one approach. And a lot of the times they do depend on juxtaposition, um, but I can't really elaborate too much on those here, but um, I do teach them in detail in the Ideas Workshop. Um, Wild Panda says, can you use different colors on text-based t-shirts or just stick with black and white? You can use whatever colors you like. Uh, of course, uh, black is one of the most popular shirts. Um, so, so yeah, I would recommend that you um, play around, but it, oftentimes it makes sense to work on a black or a dark shirt. Um, okay. So, uh, right, let's crack on here. Just uh, let's bring this in for a landing because we've gone for an hour, which went very quickly. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't say that uh, my ideas are incredible. Like I said before, this is not about coming up with the best idea. There's no such thing. But I would say that over time, I've learned not to waste time on bad ideas. And that's really what trips a lot of people up. They spend their time and they spend their energy creating ideas which are never going to connect with people, which are not funny in the first place. It doesn't matter how nice your design is, because the idea that the design is based on is bad. It's like the foundation's bad. So the building is going to be faulty. It's not going to work. So this is why, you know, this is the skill I think I've, I've got pretty good at is coming up with good ideas and not wasting time on ideas which are bad. It's not even necessarily only working on great and good ideas. It's not wasting time on bad ideas. That's really the uh, the important thing. So um, I, this is a this is a graph I pulled up of um, <clears throat> all of my designs that sold over a certain year. This was a few years ago now, and this shows on the far side how much money I made from that design. So you can see there was like one design, I think, which made me something like 5,000 or four and a half thousand pounds in one year. And then a few others that did maybe half of that or something. But then you see how long this tail is all the way down here. And that demonstrates just how many designs I had that sold. They didn't sell very often. You know, they didn't make a lot of money individually. But collectively, this, this represents a lot of income down here. And that just goes to show that, you know, a lot of my designs sold. They maybe didn't sell in huge quantities as an individual design, but it's not the individual design that really matters. It's your portfolio of designs that really matters over time. So that's why I think ideas are so important, because if you create good ideas, they're going to sell. And you want them to sell, and you, you, you don't necessarily need to come up with an incredible idea. You just need ideas that are going to connect enough to make that occasional sale. To, and once you have a big enough portfolio, that's enough to make a decent income. So um, so just like you have tools to speed up, you know, you're improving in your designing, why not, you know, speed up and improve your ideas? And that's exactly what tools like, you know, the plugin phrase generator does. And that's what the ideas workshop is all about. So if you've stayed this far, you might be interested in the ideas workshop. So let me share a little bit about that. And then I'll take some questions at the end, because I know we've gone on a little bit uh, long already. So let me just tell you what the ideas workshop is. It's basically my um, collecting of all the idea methods that I've used and that I use on a regular basis and putting them down on paper and teaching them. So I've taught them in video classes. So every single method is taught with a you know couple of videos. There's a video that explains it. And then there's a video where I walk you through it and kind of come up with ideas live. And every one of the methods comes with you know worksheets and downloads that you can follow along with. And these are the methods that I currently teach. You can see them on screen. Some of them we've talked about today, like rhyme and replace and the plug-in phrases, but there's lots of others as well. There's low-hanging fruit, there's perception puns, there's uh, trending phrases, which is very good for on-trend stuff, iconic images, mutant words, some new ones we've done this year, roll and replace and wordplay. So basically, there's a lot of different methods, and each one of these helps you to arrive at a different type of idea. So we talked earlier about those different idea types. You know, each one of these methods teaches you a way to come up with a different type of idea. Um, not only do I teach you 
you know, the methods and walk you through those. So there's video classes for each one of those methods, along with worksheets, along with downloads. And the idea is that you would actually, you know, go through this, you would learn them, and then you'd be able to come back and, and remind yourself and use the worksheets and actually use them when you're generating ideas. So this is not a course that takes you like, you know, 12 months to complete or anything like that. Um, you can dip in, you can learn a method. It would probably take you about 10 or 15 minutes to understand it. And then you can get started right away. So it's not, you know, each of the videos is usually about five or 10 minutes long. This is not a course that like takes you six months to go through or anything like that. Um, but of course, not the, the videos is, is great. That kind of teaches you the method. It helps you to understand how to put it into practice. But the Ideas Workshop also includes a suite of incredible tools. So I've shown you one of them, the Ideas Workshop plugin phrases, all 300 phrases and the ability to generate ideas by you know, changing the, the sample text and scrolling through. That's probably my favorite method. Um, but we've got other ones as well. We've got a visual inspiration board, which is a load of graphics, which is really helpful, which are great for t-shirt designs. Uh, the slogan slot machine helps you generate catchy rhyming slogans. We've got a low-hanging fruit cheat sheet, which is really low-hanging fruit ideas. Uh, Mutant Words Masher helps you play with words and come up with ideas that way. Um, and we've also got something called the Methods Workflow Cheat Sheet, which helps you understand how to come up with certain types of ideas. So all this and more, and we're always working on and developing new tools, and I'll be sharing more about that with um, Ideas Workshop members shortly. But all that to say, it's not just the methods, it's also these tools that help you, you know, really come up with ideas fast. You know, like the plugin phrases, you can come up with ideas a lot faster if you're looking at inspiration and you're looking at tools that are going to help you do that. Um, this just shows you some of the resources that are inside those tools. So, for example, the visual inspiration board, which you can see here, there's something like 130 different iconic images there. There's 55 different graphic styles included. There's 32 layout framework examples. We've got 270 and counting low-hanging fruit terms, 20 word mashing blueprints, 330 plus plugin phrases, and more being added all the time. So basically, there's a lot of resource here. There's a lot of stuff. And this is not to say, of course, you're not going to use all of that individually every day. But what it does is it gives you this great big pool to pull from so that when you're looking at... Um, you know, coming up with ideas, you're scrolling through and you're spotting all kinds of different approaches because you're looking at such a broad range of, uh, of images and of inspiration and of words and phrases that work really well. So that's just to show you what's there as well. Um, it's not just the classes. It's not just the tools. It's also uh, a community. So we have a, a dedicated community in the Ideas Workshop. We have uh, regular live calls, so you have the ability to ask questions of me to get help with what you're working on. We do regular feedback sessions and critique sh sessions as well, so you can get direct help from me and my input and you know tweaking ideas, uh, helping you with your wording, helping you with your phrasing, and helping you with your designs as well to help you you know really turn your your good ideas into great designs that sell as well. So the community as well, we have a dedicated community, not a Facebook group. This happens on a dedicated website where you can ask questions and get help and, uh, and feedback from your fellow members. The Ideas Workshop is quite highly rated by those who have taken it. This was a question we did of uh, people inside. How satisfied are you with your purchase of the Ideas Workshop? About, uh, what was the average score? 9.3. So four out of 47 people, very satisfied with their purchase so far. So if it sounds like something you're interested in, um, I'm not gonna give you the hard sell on it, but I'll answer any questions you have. Uh, but you can get access now. The doors close Saturday midnight on our current intake. So if you are interested, you have until Saturday midnight to join before the doors are closing. Um, you can get access for two monthly payments of 275, or if you'd rather pay it in one go, it's 499 right now. I cannot guarantee that price will be staying that price at the next time we open up. Um, so if you want to take advantage of this discount, which it, it will be because the prices will be going up, um, then you can you can sign up today. The link is michaelessic.com forward slash ideas. If you are interested in joining, you can read more about everything that's included there. But yeah, um, two payments, two monthly payments of 275 or one payment of 499. Uh, you can opt to subscribe, so you can subscribe on an annual basis, or you can just pay a one-off and just have access for 12 months. 
Um, so all the details are on michaelessig.com forward slash ideas if you want to find out more. Doors close Saturday midnight. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to take them now. So um, I will leave that slide up and I will roll back through some of the questions we have here. Uh, let's see, where did I lose the thread? Um, roundabout here, sharing energy says, ideas workshop, definitely worth it. Thank you very much, sharing energy. Leo says, I'm having difficulty with detailing my concepts. Excuse me, I need a bit of a, a refill here. Leo says, any questions, how I can, any suggestion, how I can refine that all my concept, all my concept, concepts, all my concepts are plain mostly. Uh, I don't really know what you mean by plain, Leo, um, but it sounds like maybe you're, you're talking about concepts that are really simple. It sounds like maybe you're you're struggling for a hook in your concepts. Um, I, I would definitely recommend you know going and checking out my my website. I've got a blog post there about some different idea generation methods. Um, I also have a, a couple of free free resources you can get on my website, a few free eBooks. So I would go and check those out because I deal a lot with, um, or I talk a lot about, you know, how to come up with original ideas on there as well. Um, but I would simply say, you know, one of the best, best hooks for designs is humor. And if you can interject humor into your designs, that's really, I think it's like a cheat code. You know, it's like something that takes you, uh, from here to here, you know, it really lifts your design. So if you can use humor, I would say, uh, you know, do so. But without more detail, Leo, it's uh, it's hard for me to answer that question. Stephanie says, I keep a journal full of ideas. I just write them down. Not all of them are great. A oh, lol. Um, no, they won't be. Of course they won't be. And I do the same thing. Anytime I have an idea, I write it down. I keep, a, I keep an Airtable base of those ideas. Um, and uh, one thing I would say is that, you know, that's a really great habit to get into because one of the things you can do is you can scroll back through the ideas you've had and what you'll find happens is those ideas will spark new ideas. And because you saved them, you're able to then, you know, remix them and your brain is able to put them together with other things subconsciously almost, and you'll be able to generate new ideas. So keeping a journal of ideas is definitely a good idea. I recommend you do that. Um, especially if you can keep it in a format where you can sort them and filter them and stuff like that. Uh, that's, a, that's a really great idea. Um, I Dream of Crafting says, you have got my mind buzzing with ideas. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you for, for watching. Rick says, great inspiration as usual. Thanks, Michael. Love the workshop. Thank you, Rick. Um, uh, Scott says, certainly, uh, certainly worth thinking about the ideas workshop if that's your need. And it is your need. It will take you longer than Michael says, as you will get bogged down with ideas so fast and furious. Yeah, <laughs> yes, uh, that is that is a compliment and a not a compliment. But yes, of course, you will generate a lot of ideas. Um, yeah, a lot of people say that they generate so many ideas that they have to kind of slow down and work through things a bit slower. So yeah, uh, Stephen says, Michael, any plans for a special discount code for your loyal fans? Uh, yes, Stephen, uh, the discount is 275 times two, that's the discount. Uh, this is a, this, this price is going up. This is, you know, I can't say much right now about what we have planned for the ideas workshop, but the ideas workshop is a membership. So when you buy, you are a member for 12 months. And what that means is you're going to have access to everything that happens inside the ideas workshop, all the new tools or everything we're working on for 12 months. I can't share too much because we don't have, you know, I don't want to commit to things that we're not able to deliver on, but we are working on some very big, very exciting tools, which, you know, no one else has anything like this. And it's going to be exclusive to Ideas Workshop members. So the price will be going up. Um, this is the discounted price. Uh, two times 275 is a, an absolute uh, steal for the value that's in here. If you think this is for you, um, if you think this is something that's going to help you in your practice and in your development of ideas, then, uh, then it is absolutely, you know, absolutely worth it, I believe. Um, so yeah, this is the discount. Um, in, you know, in a year's time, I think it's going to be, you know, double or triple that price. So I would definitely be, uh, be grabbing it now because you, what you'll be doing is you're basically buying into 12 months worth of updates and, and new stuff that we're going to be rolling out. 
inside the ideas workshop. So yeah, Roger says, thank you ever so much for the workshop today. And I hope you have a wonderful holiday. Thank you, Roger. I appreciate that. Wild Panda says, thank you very much. Um, SFN says, do you have multiple seller accounts or do you have multiple brands under the same accounts per platform? I'm thinking the best way to organize my activities. Any recommendations? Um, it's kind of a big topic, SFN, and it, it depends on you know your specific uh, case and, and what those brands are and stuff. Um, I do have different brands for different purposes, and I think the point at which you might want to draw the line is, is it going to confuse people to see these designs next to these designs? For example, you know, let's say you're doing political designs. If you're doing Trump supporting designs, you probably don't want to have one store that sells Trump supporting designs and also sells Democrat supporting designs, right? The two worlds don't mix. And that's not going to help you build your brand because you're going to have people fighting or, you know, people are going to be like, what's going on with this brand? So, uh, that's, I think, a, a piece of advice of where to draw the line. If it's going to cause confusion, you know, the, the different kinds of designs, then separate them out. But if it's not necessarily going to cause confusion or there's a thread that ties designs together, then you can keep them all under, under the same account. Beth says, I've recently joined the workshop and it is awesome. If you are considering it, give it a try. Thank you, Beth. I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate you joining, of course. Bo says, there's actually a great price for all that that's actually a great price for all that you get your input and that of the communities are invaluable oh yeah the course and info is wonderful too thank you uh bo yeah I, I forget sometimes that it's a course with all these videos and i'm always like oh look at the tools look at the tools look at the tools but but yeah the, the course is there as well but thank you bo appreciate that um uh, Windsor, Windsorpedia, helpful video as always. Thanks for answering our questions. Have a great holiday. Cream teas on top. Yeah, that will definitely be happening. Thank you, Windsor. Um, uh, what else have we got here? Uh, sharing. Thank you, Michael, for sharing so much. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Okay, great. I think I've answered all the questions there. So thank you, everybody, for joining me today. I think we have uh, covered all questions, covered all ground. Um, one last mention of the ideas workshop, michaelessig.com forward slash ideas. Oh, Jess has got a question. Hi, Michael. Does the workshop, workshop help with building out your brand and marketing? Um, it, indirectly, Jess. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you and say that it's a course about marketing. It is not. It is a course about coming up with ideas, how to generate ideas. However, here's the thing. Ideas are really important for your marketing. For example, you know, my Instagram account with, 10,000 followers, um, that has been built off my ideas, right? That's how you build Instagram accounts and that's how you build a following online. Um, so if you're able to come up with funny ideas, those are not just limited to designs. You can use those same ideas for your tweets, for your Facebook posts, for Instagram, for generating all kinds of different, you know, marketing approaches. So, um, so the answer, Jess, is no, it's not, it's not dead, it's not focused on marketing. I, you know, I don't teach you about Facebook ads or anything like that. Um, it's not a course on branding or you know how to design the nice logo. It is specifically focused around ideas and how to come up with funny ideas, the kind of ideas we've talked about today, uh, funny phrases, funny puns, that kind of thing. So that's the focus of it. Um, not really marketing, although it does have some overlap um, on that as well. So yeah, hope that answers that for you. So yeah, michaelessig.com forward slash ideas. If you want to check out the ideas workshop, doors close on Saturday and uh, you can get access today for the very reasonable price, two time, two monthly payments of 275 or you can pay it all in one payment of 499. SFN says, thanks for today. Have a great holiday. Stay safe. Thank you very much, SFN. And thank you, Bo. And thank you, Jess. Appreciate you all joining me today. So yeah, thank you all for joining me. Um, I am away next week, so I won't be live streaming next week, but we'll be back the following week with a live stream as usual. Um, keep an eye on your inbox for details about that. And of course, if you want to check out the ideas workshop, michaelassic.com forward slash ideas is the place to go. You can see it up there. And if you have any questions about that, you can also email me, michael at michaelassic.com if you have any questions before the deadline on Saturday. Okay. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Have a great rest of your day and a great weekend, and I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.